Thank you, Chris. Hello, everybody. Also from my side, I'm pleased to welcome you for today's webinar where we will tell you about the new features of WeDo and I will give you the most recent information about those features, starting from task management, handing over to electronic signature and then also having a look at the governance function. In the first block, we'll have a look at functionalities that are related to project and task management. In the second block, as mentioned, we have a look at the electronic signature. And there is also a small bonus at the end. So for today's use case, we'll imagine that we are trying to organizing and managing our project for a new website. I will use this use case during this webinar to show you the new functionalities, starting right off now with milestones. So let me share you my screen. Where you now can see my we do not to work within my workspace new website, which is created for this project. And I would like to show you how you can add milestones directly to your widow tasks. In my current workspace, I've got tasks listed that are related to this project. And I also added sections like pre-project, lounge, go live and communication. I used these sections to split the different tasks within it and to assort them accordingly. This gives me a simple and quick overview of all the tasks, each section or project phase. Now, normally I'm using the blue button on top right to add a further task. Now with the new function, I'm having a small arrow right to the right here where I can add directly sections as I already done here in orange, pink and so on. But I will also be able to add milestones. So milestones in the context of project management are symbolizing a key element or a critical point within my project. And it marks the completion of a specific phase within my project. So normally without any duration associated with it. In this case here, I would like to add four milestones that will mark the end of each of these phases. I now click simply on add milestones where it will open me directly a line as it's also doing it for my tasks or sections. I have a detailed menu where I can now add the name of my milestone. For example, I choose pre-project. I can assign milestones, for example, to myself or to others. And I can also add the priorities and select a due date. For this case, I'd like to choose today. We now see that it is already updated on the left hand side and I quickly add some more milestones to get my project overview finalized. I can also assign milestones to other colleagues. For the lounge, I define the next week as a due date. For the communication, I assign it to Christine and set the due date in a month. And for the go live, we choose Alain and set the due date in two months time. So we now having our milestones right here on top. 
as I said, the milestone is marking a deadline. So I can either leave it on top here or I can also move it to my section, have it right on top or at the end of each of my milestones and sections. So I can have a proper view within my task list to see once the tasks are done that I can also complete my milestone. As you might already know, there is a beta version of a Gantt view in We Do Tasks. In the Tasks tab, I'm now having my display chosen as a list. And I've got just on the right side my Gantt view, where I can show my project within a Gantt view, including my milestones. So whenever the tasks are planned or maybe take longer or shorter, it will automatically adapt in my view or adapt my complete milestones. So my project is always right updated. My task lists is complete and I have a proper overview. The milestones are just one of many functionalities that will come with the WeDo project management. So for today, a first insight in this webinar. I would like to continue our webinar by setting tasks dependencies. Now imagine in our project that we have tasks that are related on each other. So um, I would like to highlight the necessity of a certain order of my activities. Um, to add dependencies, I can ensure that the most important tasks are done beforehand others will be done. So I take the example of fixing bugs and optimizing performance. And I see in the detailed view that I have a new possibility add dependency. Now clicking on the button add dependency, I've got my completed task list of this workspace. I now can choose the various tasks that will be related to my uh, former task fixing bugs and optimizing performances. For example, um, if I choose these three uh, tasks within the launch phase, I can add them as a dependency and it will show me that these tasks are blocked now. So with the dependencies, I'm making sure if I would fulfill this task fixing box optimization performances and would like to complete it, that we will automatically remark this and tell me, hey, there are various tasks depending on this. So you first would need to complete these tasks before you close this one. Of course, I can do this also vice versa by just simply um, adding the dependencies vice versa and do not do them blocked by, but blocking. So there we, you've really got an opportunity to set dependencies and all tasks that have a dependencies are shown in a list within the task detail, but also you have a symbol of an hourglass before every task that has a dependency. With these two functionalities, we're getting more and more in direction towards project management. And therefore, I would also like to show you how you could use advanced subtasks within WeDo. When I now open my task list all pages and content to be created for the website, I have the possibility to add subtasks. 
for the time being, if I add a subtasks, I could only mention text and describe what the subtask is about. But with the novel functionalities, I now can also assign these individual subtasks to other people. For example, if I now choose add a subtask, I can put a title in it and I have a possibility to open a second detailed view which jumps directly into my new subtask, where I now can assign the subtask to my colleague Albert, set a due date for him, and describe what the subtask is about. We now can see on top that this subtask is related to a main task. And also in our task list, we see that there is a small arrow, meaning that there are subtasks within this master task. So with the advanced subtask, we are now able to involve more than one task responsible to fulfill a master task. This prevents us from creating lots of duplicates of tasks to make sure that all the tasks from the individual team members will be done on the right time. And of course, it gives a, a much more better overview of my tasks and of the status of the fulfillment. Once a subtask is done, of course, it will automatically be shown in my master task. For example, in case of our, if he has done his task. I can do this quickly for him. Then I'll see the state of progress also within my master task. One of two subtasks are already completed. And if I see the list, I can see the bar, which indicates me the percentage of fulfillment, but also I can see that the second task here is already marked green as I just completed it. Another possibility to advance your task management in WeDo is to use the display and filter functionalities. But first, what if I marked some task as completed? Maybe uh, because I did complete them, but also maybe because I just clicked too fast. They do not appear anymore in my task list of pending tasks, but I have always the possibility to have a look at the completed tasks. Just use the status here and select completed to get the overview of your completed tasks again. So maybe you just want to check which of the tasks are already completed, or maybe you want to set and restore a task back to your current task list then they will appear again in the open tasks. Now, with the filter functionality, you have the possibility to get a better or a more precise overview of your tasks. For example, um, if I want to select tasks that are related to my colleague, Melanie, I go quickly in the administration workspace where me and Melanie are a member of, and I'm creating a brand new filter. By choosing the assignee, user Melanie, and I'm adding the due date within the next, let's say, 30 days, because she will be on a big holiday and I'll be her cover. I can now add a name for that filter. Save it and we do will automatically filter all the tasks of Melanie that will be due within the next 30 days. So because I will be her cover, I can now simply mark all the tasks 
and assign them to myself. So I can get them in my tasks list directly, my tasks. And the filter, of course, has done its job. If there will be some more tasks within the next days, I can check the filter again. And if I won't need it anymore, I can just click on configure filters and delete it once not necessary anymore to me. Now, creating a second exercise and example within our new website project, I maybe want to show all the tasks that are related to Franco. But I don't want to see all the tasks. I only want to see the tasks which are in the phase of the launch. So in we do, I have the possibility to add sections. But also customized fields. And in this project here, I've already created a custom field project phase where I now can set the value to launch. I save the filter with from Colange and see the list of tasks that are related to that specific project phase launch. So you see the filter possibilities can not only be used for standard items within our task detail, but also for customized fields. To round up this overview of status filters and our task management in general, I would also like to show you some more possibilities in the display. As we've seen at the beginning, I've chosen the list view where you for sure also can use the Kanban view. But you also have the possibility to group your task list or do a specific sorting. For example, if I want to sort it by due date, then of course I see all the due dates at the end of my task and it will group me all my tasks in due date packages. But maybe I also want to group it by user so I can see which of my project members have how many tasks and which of these do I might have to reassign to someone else if I want to keep track of my team members' tasks. And of course, if I use customized fields, I can also use these to group my tasks lists within. Now, having spoken quite a lot about tasks and showing you some first feature with, uh, which are more related to project management, I would like now to show you what's about the electronic signature that will be soonish arrive. We'll therefore switch to another um, demo workspace where I have already prepared a meeting of the board and we now can have a look at the electronic signature. The electronic signature of WeDo will, as I said, soon be introduced. Um, this is a uh, very important and of course a legal area also where we will offer a variety of options. So there will be three types of signature. One, the simple electronic signature, the advanced electronic signature, and also a qualified electronic signature. You will be able to find more about electronic signatures on our website including also pricing packages and possibilities to add this brand new add-on to your network. It will be an add-on, as I just said, so it's not mandatory to use. It's um, your own choice if you want to use it. And we will provide more information soon on our website. Now, first of all, once I've chosen to use the WeDo electronic signature, 
I need to go directly into my settings and choose the signature, but also install my personal signature. Here, I simply choose my country. I'm adding my phone number, so I'll be verified. We're working together with a Swiss provider that is um, legally um, allowed and um, certified to create electronic signatures. And I just got an SMS with the code so I can register. And now we see that my phone number has been identified. Here I see the level of the certificate, my details of the certificate, the signature. Of course, I can also upload my um, handwritten signature here as an image, or I can choose the possibilities that I have in WeDo. It will always be shown with a date and timestamp, but also a QR code if I wish so. And with this information saved, I'm now able to sign meeting minutes wherever I'm set as a signature. We're now having a look at my board meeting. In the board meeting, it's important that first the signatories are marked within our axis of the participants and that the meeting minutes are already confirmed and locked. I can only sign meetings that are locked. So I will also quickly add the code to lock this meeting. We now see the status, the meeting is locked. And I now have the possibility to request signatures. Now on this page, I can see both Patrick and myself, which are the signatories of these meeting minutes. And there is already a line prepared for our signatures. Here are the three types of signatures that I've initially mentioned. If we want to use the highest and legally weighted electronic signature, we choose the qualified one. This will replace a handwritten signature due to the qualification it has. I will be receiving a notification on my smartphone as I just did the registration with it. Once I've sent the request for the signature, all the signatories will receive an email. And of course, the signatories, if I go back into my inbox, will also receive a signatory request directly in their inbox. So I now have the possibility either to check my mail where I get the email and click directly with that link to get my signatory. Or I check my inbox where I also have the view of my different meetings and signatory requests, which I now try to do. I have my meeting protocol, I can check it. And once I agree with the content, I can sign it. So once the protocols are signed, the status of the protocol will be changing, not only when it's signed, but also once we're sending out the signature requests. So we're seeing now that the board meeting is waiting for signatures. We always have the possibility to go through the meeting notes. We see the status. We also see if already uh, signatures have been saved or not. And of course, 
Um, we can always check the detail to to see who is signatory and if it's still pending or if someone has signed the meeting protocol already. Now, this was only a brief but first introduction of the electronic signatories. Uh, with these, you can sign all the meeting minutes within WeDo. You have the option of all your WeDo users to select them as signatories within the meeting settings. And as it's um, available within three types of signatories, you can also um, choose single, advanced or qualified signatories depending on the meeting protocol that you would like to sign. Now, as we just had a look at the signature requests, we've seen that there is something new in WeDo. Formerly, you might remember, we had the notifications just at the bottom next to our profile. But now, you can see the brand new inbox on top, just right below the search bar, where we now have collected all the notifications, the vote requests, or also the signatory requests once there are some available. Now, the brand new inbox provides you all the information and notification that concerns you as task responsible, as a meeting participant or uh, an observer of a task. As another novelty, I would like to show you preference settings that you now also be able to do within your personal settings. If you click on your settings, you see that on your personal settings, there is a new tab called preferences where you now can set default settings for the meeting you, for example. So if you would like to customize, you see the five different phrases of the meetings and you can select in what type of view you would like to see your meeting minutes. Me personally, I would like to have them every time in the document view. So whenever I'm opening a WeDo protocol now, I will see it in the document view. Then you've got the option to choose if a topic will be repeating automatically once you add it to a meeting agenda or not. For myself, I do appreciate if it's every time repeating, so I leave it this way. But maybe I will also prepare agendas for um, my colleagues or my supervisor. And in this case, it might make no sense if I'm standard topic presenter. So I can also deactivate this functionality. Depending on these preferences, your meeting settings will automatically be um, updated. And your administrator of the network will also have the possibilities to define this preference for the whole organization. So if I quickly check my meeting, I'm now having standard the document view, as you can see right on top. Of course, I can always switch to the topic view if I wish so. Now that we have seen the different types of settings that will be newly really released in WeDo, I would also like to show you a new function called governance. Now the WeDo governance function is based on the whole accuracy concept. And this allows you to display your organizational chart within circles and roles. You will find the governance function in your menu. And you already see here that I've 
created an ABC LTD for this demo network. You see that my main circle is the circle of the company and it does consist of various circles. A circle is normally a department. Within I've got different roles, for example, here the HR. Where I have my recruitment, my personal management, also the HR strategy in there. So now for each circle, you will find key elements as the purpose, the accountabilities, or also the domains and roles of the circle. So with a circle, you have the possibility to really describe what the department has responsibility for. And you can also add the members of the department so you can see which of these are administrators, in this case, of the circle HR. Then if we go a level deeper and have a look at the role, for example, the recruitment, you can also see that Again, there you can add a purpose or even the accountabilities of a role. So you can really describe what the recruitment is about, who is filling out the responsibilities in this case, so who is co-worker within this team. And of course, who will do the cover for each other. If I now have a look at the whole circle ABC LTD. I can simply click on the different roles and circles to get more insights. But I also have a member list or um, a um, user directory. So if I use the user directory, for example, I can simply click on Anita to see what roles or circles she's responsible for. Of course, I can also use users by name as Christine, where I can see that he is, she is in charge of the role back office and in the circle of HR. I can also use the user directory to click directly in the different roles. So now I'm in the role back office of the HR, where Christine is responsible for with Alan and Beatrice. In this specific case, we also see that this role back office has a different color than the other roles. This is because this is a mirrored role. So meaning if you have more than one back, back office within your organization, you don't need to add the information two, three or four times. You can simply mirror your role. Here we can see that this is a mirror world right on top. And we see at the bottom that the original role is in the management circle. So if we click on the link, we jump directly into the management circle and get to the back office role, where I've got the same description with the purpose and accountabilities, but maybe other people that are responsible. I see that this role was mirrored to two other circles, the HR and the administration. And if I have a look at the whole overview, I can see the green role back office in these three circles. Of course, I can select a different color if I wish so. I always can change the color of my circle if green is not the right one to me. Then I have a super easy overview where my mirrored roles are. And of course, by clicking on them, I can get more details of all the responsibilities and people that work within. So in sum, the governance functionality is really to give you a possibility to create a dynamic view of your organizational chart. You have the possibility to 
process and document all your department's roles, but also um, job descriptions. And every of your collaborators every time knows who is responsible for what or who is doing the cover for whom. So if you are interested in more information, just let us know and we can have a look at it, how you should introduce it to your company. Now, if I have quickly a look on my webinars list, I can see that we are already at the end of the preview of the new functionalities. So if we do a quick recap, we've seen some features for the project and task management that will be released. Some of them already are live in your current WeDo network. Some will be um, released within the next days and others within the next weeks. So from time to time, we will now launch new functionalities as just previously shown. And whenever you have questions, just get in touch with us and uh, we'll have a look at it together. So if you have more questions uh, in terms of governance or signature, maybe it would also make sense to book a direct demo with us. Then of course you can do this directly over our website or you have the possibility within support chat to book a call with us directly.